Iguatemi apresenta Iguatemi Talks Fashion. Uma plataforma de ação e reflexão sobre a moda. Workshops de moda. Comportamento. Design. de volta para mais um encontro que eu tenho certeza vocês vão adorar. A querida Georgina Brandolini vai entrevistar o poderoso editor Godfrey Dini. E antes de chamar essa entrevista, eu quero lembrar que ainda hoje, no final do dia, vocês vão encontrar no perfil JK Iguatemi e Iguatemi o resumo de tudo que rolou por aqui, feito pela jornalista Maria Prata. Vale conferir. E não deixe de usar a nossa hashtag Iguatemi Talks Fashion. Agora sim, Godfrey Dini tem muita história para contar. O jornalista já entrevistou diversos nomes de peso, como Carla Gerfeld e Giorgio Armani. Atua em diversos veículos internacionais de moda, até ocupar o cargo de editor-chefe global no portal Fashion Network. E quem entrevistou esse gigante foi a queridíssima Georgina Brandolini, que trabalhou por mais de 20 anos na Maison e é Relações Públicas Internacional do Iguatemi. Essa entendi tudo de moda e eu espero que vocês curtam muito essa entrevista. Até. Oi, meu nome é Georgina Brandolini, a gente já reconhece, faço bastante entrevistas. Eu trabalho como consultor de moda no Iguatemi e hoje eu tenho o prazer de conversar com Godfredini, que é o redator-chefe internacional do FashionNetwork.com, uma pessoa super importante no mundo da moda, que vê todos os desfiles no mundo inteiro e tem uma opinião ótima, ele vai dar umas dicas para a gente do que ele acha do futuro da moda e em geral. Então, daqui a pouco vamos estar juntos de novo. I can hear you, can hear me? Well, great, yeah, absolutely. We're, we're on, we're perfect. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> oh, here I am. Hold on, let me, uh, let me get that. Uh, how about that? <laughs> let me knock this. Okay, great. So, happy to hear from, to see you. Thank you for doing this interview. I know you're very busy, huh? Not at all, not at all. I know, I know, but you know, we all, you're a very uh, important person in fashion. You're too nice. Um, I mean it. I wouldn't, if not, I wouldn't have asked you, apart from being my, one of my great friends. So, uh -huh. what do you think uh, is going to happen? With the, how, no, first, let's start with the start. Yeah. How, have you been, how have you been able to write about fashion in all these problems we had in the last uh, nine months? Well, uh, it, it's been very difficult. There's been a lot of bad news, obviously. There's been yeah. a lot of, uh, cancellations, a lot of shows called off. A lot of uh, a lot of people let go. A lot of businesses bankrupt. So there's been a lot to write about. Anyway, without even leaving your own desk, uh, uh, many of the seasons were cancelled. You know, the, all the cruise shows in the spring, the menswear season, the couture, uh, and it, it came back a little in the last uh, month. Um, we have. Uh, correspondents in New York and Milan and London, and I, I live in Paris. So uh, we've been going to the shows where possible, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, in the end of the day, there were a very few real live shows in London. There were about um, 10 or 12 proper ones in, in Milan, very small shows, and there were about uh, 20 in, in Paris. 
Which one? Which was? Which was the town that you thought that were able to make the most, the most important fashion? Milan, Paris, or London? Recently, in this pandemic, I mean. I think um, I think uh, Paris once again. Uh, yeah, as always. <laughs> as always, but I got to say the Milanese. I think were, there were some very interesting collections, and some of the older designers made very good collections. I think. Yeah, I've been following that. Yeah. I think Ar Emporio Armani was a very good collection. I think Versace was a bit of a comeback collection. I think um, uh, Marni, I thought was, was a very creative. I, I think. Uh, what happened was, uh, with a lot of designers, uh, you know, there's a French term, remise en question. Yeah, so very, you, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It doesn't really be just things, it means asking what, what it, what's the point of what you do? Why are you doing this? And I think a lot of designers, uh, because of COVID, because of lockdown, went back to when they were young, that they... Um, went back to the reason why they became designers in the first place. So some of, the, some of them are even, you know, getting people, you know, they were dyeing fabrics in their own bathtubs or they were trying out, you know, they're having Zoom meetings, let's try this, I have some of this fabric. There was a lot of nearly going back to the basics, um, uh, not obviously at Chanel or, 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 or Vuitton or something like that, but even there, I think, there was a sense of people experimenting uh, again, you know, I, I give you an example. I, there were a lot of presentations in, in, in Paris. One was uh, Patou, very interesting, relaunch a house by uh, uh, Guillaume Henri, yeah. financed by LVMH, startup house, but backed by a big group, interesting young designer. And he went back to when he was 10 or 12, and was a boy in, you know, in the east of France, and he wanted to watch fashion, and it was all on TV, there was TV on, on Canal Plus and things, and the only way he could see it was his parents would record the show on the video, and the next day really? he would come in. So That's he, great, that's great, he, yeah. He made a video of the ideas, and it looked a little bit shaky, like, you know, oh, the way it was 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, so, yeah plays or TV things or football matches. So I thought it was very interesting, that, that concept. I thought someone like uh, uh, Francesco Rizzo at Marne is quite an experimental designer. He was literally dyeing the fabrics in his bathtub and he was giving them to a woman on a guy in a vest, but they'd take him across town and they'd come back the next day, made in. There was a whole lot of that being done. Even uh, uh, someone like uh, Maria Grazia at uh, Dior. Now that's a big brand, but in the summer when they did Couture, uh, she had this whole idea of the last time there was a huge crisis in France, which is the Second World War, when all fashion stores, shows were stopped, that they went and they made dolls, you know, of about, you know, yeah, yeah. 50 centimeters. And she recreated that idea. And I think she's doing great, Maria Grazia. I, think I, I thought it was extremely clever use of an historical idea in the DNA, but also uh, uh, to create a fantasy and also to make literal models. And they, 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 you, after the Second World War, the French designers all sent those those puppets on a tour of the world. They went to Neiman Marcus in Texas. They went to New York. They went to Russia, Almost. and they will do something Almost. with that. So. I think that's an interesting way the designers are being very flexible on what they do. And then... But uh, you know what's, what's sad about yeah. all this is that the people yeah. who do this have, I mean, it's all the big houses because they have money behind. Yeah. But I mean, the small, as you know, the small fashion houses, it's difficult for them, you know, to sell without doing a show, no? What do you think is going to happen with the smaller yeah. houses? I think the small houses all had to do videos, you know, and yeah. I think about 70% of them did. Even kids were doing videos. There was a, uh, there was a guy, uh, Sebi Magugu. He was the guy who won the uh, LVMH prize last year, a South African guy, very talented designer, but more a, a great ideas guy. He made a awesome. movie, a little independent movie, about uh, apartheid spies 
spying against him, his own black, he's black guy, spying against his community and going to Washington. And he made a little, it probably cost him $5,000, a great independent video. You can, anyone can see it on the web. He even, it referenced the culture because he had these very nice man shirts that were made in, in a print. And the print was the confession of a real South African spy that he gave to the Truth Commission. I, so I think that idea of making videos is very important. I think uh, many people uh, created uh, digital moments where you'd have a mini show for 50 or 80 people in an art gallery and you turn that into a video or you could see it live or then it was permanently there. You know, I'll give you two good examples. In London, maybe the best collection in London was... Uh, Which one? Uh, Simon Rocha, I thought was a great collection. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought Erdem. Uh, you know, this English thing of a certain kind of historicism. But she yeah. made a fantastic collection. It was kind of like uh, Jane Austen meets Catherine de' Medici, you know? <laughs> I, love, uh, I, love, I love the meeting, yeah. <laughs> which is a bit like... Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I think there's a, if there's any big trend, macro trend, it's uh, at the sophisticated end, making clothes that make women feel empowered and elegant in their private life, when they're at home, in, the, in, their, in their loft, or in their villa, or in their apartment, or wherever it is. So women of success, so they don't want to just wear... Um, <laughs> sweatpants and, and I think people like Maria Grazia, Simon Rocha, uh, uh, people like that address that feeling very much. Of, of. Then I think there was the whole sense of making um, um, crazy kind of invitation shows in a box. Can I show you a few of them? Yeah. Here is. Oh, uh, good, good, good. Uh, here, here. I'll show so you so this. Well, <laughs> Look at this. This is uh, Lueve. This is their show in a box, you see? And you've got a whole show yeah. that came, you know, with all the different components. You know, uh, may I show it to you? Yeah, so. You know, all these. Oh, actually, yeah. That's, so there was, there was just this, or there was a show on top of that? There was 24 hours of videos where he interviewed people, where there were looks, where he made, you know, he even made kind of like, you could make up boxes, you could make them yourself, you know, so looks like this. It was, you know, it was kind That's of a great faintly, idea, yeah. faintly childish, but uh, very interesting. He made and that for the way, and, and he snatched, that was for Yes. He, he, said, he also sent the biggest invitation in the world. Yeah. See? Which is. See? Oh, yeah. 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 Which I received. Uh, 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 so, um, I think there was a lot of other people made, uh, made newspapers. Here's one. This was Kenzo, made a whole newspaper. So that, on Kenzo, for instance, there was nothing online, it was just on paper. Oh, no, in, the, in, every, in everyone's case, there were, there were things online, but they okay, yeah. added to that by sending you, because you couldn't yeah. do it, you know, they were sending yeah. physical objects to impress upon you the concept, or to get you to spend more time with the, the the materials, they literally would send, you know packets of the materials used in the show. You could feel they would send uh, sense. They'd send you know bo boxes of ideas. So you had that idea, that idea of a show in a box, which is a new concept. But Maria Grazia, she did something. I received an invitation for the. She did a, a, a thing like this also. The other did a thing like this for the invitation. I think they did. Say, I don't. I, know I received. The, I, know I received the box or something. Yeah, or like another. I mean, or here, like Paul Smith. I just got this Paul Smith. He, uh, you know, he saw all the all the fabrics, all the colors, the references. You know, it, it, it quite striking. So. Uh, now, Godfrey, if you had someone like your son or your best friend, who I know your son is a bit small, 
But if you had someone you, who wanted to start business now, it's yes. not the right moment. Yes. With, the, with not much money. Yes. What would you say? What would you? How would you help him? With your experience I, and everything. I would say that I think that the key thing always is the concept strong, is the idea behind it uh, original? Is it is it coherent to what? Women or men want to dress, and uh, are they? Is it beautiful? People really want to feel special. I think again in fashion. I, I think. But uh, don't you think now that very, uh, I mean, very elegant evening clothes is not the right moment to do them? I mean, where you wear them at home? You know. <laughs> it, it is, I think there's nowhere to go. You exactly. cannot go. <laughs> no. no exactly. You know, there are, no, there are no real parties. You kind of get dressed for Zoom nowadays, you know what I mean? Exactly, but, for you, you and me, exactly. No, there's no party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think, all, I think people still will have a small dinner parties. I think people will have friends over six, eight people, ten people. Yeah. I think that's kind of way that till, until we get a vaccine. And I think in those occasions, people want to dress elegantly. And I think there is still a demand for... Mm creativity of that sort. Closer than are at ease, a certain loose feeling to but are decorative and embroidered. I mean I think Maria Grazia got that got that very well. I, I see you're a big fan of Maria Grazia, so am I actually. Yeah. So am I, I, yeah. if, if you look uh, um, at other big brands, uh, it was curious um, if you looked at um, Chanel, you didn't get a great impression. There wasn't any real reference to COVID or the or the lockdown, it, you know, the, Chanel took a different approach. Uh, Chanel's idea was that, uh, you know, Virginie Viard has made Chanel five or ten years younger than Karl Lagerfeld. That's that's very clear. The you know, and and her most recent show was all about Hollywood and the connection. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah. And uh, if you went to the show, it was in the Grand Palais. You know, I once went to a show with. Four and a half thousand people at it for Chanel. Yeah, and there's still, yeah, yeah. 1500, 2000 people. You know, at this time there were like 300 people or something. There were two shows. Social distancing, you're all very far apart. Still, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, and she referenced Hollywood. Holly, she referenced Hollywood with the giant sign, Hollywood sign men in two. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. But I thought it was interesting that her whole look was a kind of young, uh, kind of rock and roll party girl. You know what I mean? It was, you know, a girl wearing this Chanel jacket, cut loosely, wider sleeves, bigger lapels, but wearing with, like, bicycle shorts, you know? I think she's very good, that girl, Virginia. I think she's very good. I, I think what she, she said to me afterwards was, uh, you know, with Carl, uh, he always had a great idea, a great concept. It would be whatever it could be. Chanel Russia, or it could be uh, Coco in Venice, or it could be uh, surrealism, and whatever whatever concept it was that that he used. But at a certain point, she would also say, "But that, okay, that's the concept car. But how is how is the jeune fille going to wear that? She can't really wear it that way." And she she said, "If I look at anything, I always think, is anyone really going to wear it?" And you feel that. Good more. question. Yeah, and it's true. It's a little bit more pop, a little more rock and roll, but it's a lot easier to wear for a woman who's, you know. Yeah. But, but for you, in your when your experience in fashion, you yeah. started out with masculine men wear before. No, you were covering a lot of masculine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You prefer doing it the feminine one now. You prefer what's I think yeah, masculine. Kind of, bit, yeah, you know. Well, I mean, I still do the two, but um, I, I, and you know, I, it's a different thing when I look. At the men's clothes, half the time I think, would I ever wear it myself? You know, how, how would I wear it? But I also think when you look at any collection, there's first of all an aesthetic thing: is it beautiful? Is it Absolutely. pleasing? Yeah, you know, is it is it is it artistic? Because nowadays fashion designers are perceived to be art artists. But at a certain point, you got to say, where in what context would you wear the clothes? You know, where would you would you wear it to an office? Would you wear it to meet your boyfriend's parents? Would you wear it backstage at U2 or the Rolling Stones? Would you wear it in Ibiza for cocktail art? You've got to find some context in which you wear the clothes. Uh, and, and would you look cool? Would you look contemporary? Would you look modern? 
And sometimes you go to shows and you just you, you it's if you look at them, half the clothes don't say don't say something to you. So you have to you have to mark the collection down in your head or when you write them. But I think people are going to spend, I mean, all of us, we're going to spend much less in clothes now because there's nowhere to go, really. So how do you think the luxury houses like Joe, Valentino, Dolce, all these are going to react this? Because they're going, going to be difficult for them because they have lots of people working for them in the back. They can't fire everybody. They have to go on. You know, it's difficult. Well, I, I, think, uh, I think it's going to be a very difficult year. Um, I think two things have happened. Though China, the business is very good. China is very good business at saving, and a lot of people are selling quite well online. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so mm -hmm. if business is down, but it's not down 50 percent, it's down, uh, you know, 15, 20 percent. So uh, it's obviously very difficult, and I think that will stay the same. Um, uh, people are not going to take a winter holiday for those things this year. You know, the whole idea of a cruise collection or buying something like that's uh, finished. Yeah, that's finished. And nearly a mark of success nowadays. You can go somewhere in the winter, somewhere warm. You know what I mean? Uh, and it, you don't have to be a billionaire to do that. And but that is all over. So that for the next six months or a year, as far as we can see. So I think that will so, uh, a lot. In this pandemic, but I think it's very sad when you walk around everywhere now. You see all these shops closing. You know, it's yeah. very sad. And you feel that really fashion, for fashion, for everybody, I know even the financial business, but for fashion has been a real, it's terrible for fashion. This, I, this think, I, think, I think whenever we find a solution to this, if it's, let's say it's this time in the summer, you know what I mean? Let's say next summer, finally, there's some drug that's beginning to work and things are a bit more under control. I think there'll be an explosion of, of shopping. People will, won't have, have been able to buy anything. I'm sure. Myself, I'm dying. I'm no, I'm sure. Absolutely. No, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, what's something new? You know, and, and, and then I think um, I think a lot of things will happen. I also think we live in an era of uh, co-branding, co uh, collaborations, and I don't think that's going to end. Yesterday, the big story here in Paris was uh, Vuitton launching LVX NBA with the National Basketball Association. Quite an interesting collection of uh, kind of logo, a logo, but a kind of Vuitton logo, but not like a basketball player. And like whole suiting, jackets, varsity jackets, bags, boots, the whole thing, like a proper capsule collection. So I think the ability of fashion and luxury to extend into other areas uh, will be very important. And, and then one other thing, yeah. Sorry, no, no, go on, go on. I'll ask you a question after. The other big thing we've seen is um, sustainability. People talk about it, you know, but it doesn't really mean mean so much. No, but, it's true that, yeah. But do they, uh, what does it actually mean, sustainability? But now, yeah. Gradually, now, it is beginning to happen. Like one thing that brought it home to me, I, Literally across the street, I went to see uh, an influencer I'd never heard of. Her name is uh, Zenia Adams. She's the second biggest influencer in Germany, a million and a half followers. Very elegant, oh. pretty German girl. Yes. She's created her own brand, uh, yeah. uh, the attire, and uh, it's completely sustainable. And, and the, on the barcode, if you put your, um, you know, and uh, you know, you, you sh not the barcode, but the, the, the thing, yeah. yeah. yeah you put your phone on it, you will get the uh, material composition, sometimes the names of the mills that provided the. That's interesting, yeah. Also, you get the factories where they're made, sometimes even the address of the factory where they're. So that's just one like influencer that she's gone that far to create that level of honesty, transparency about. It. So we're going to live in a much more transparent era where people will be, uh, you know, uh, will, will want that. They learn system. But you've been, you been in fashion, fashion all your life. life. Uh, well, 30 years. Yeah, I used to be in um, economics and politics, right? and I used to cover as a young man. Uh, you but I still find uh, fashion fascinating. I think it's a reflection of our times. I think that there are a few things that say more about 
who we are today in a fashion in a strange way. It's the democratization of art. It's, it's, it's no surprise if you go to the greatest museums in the world today, the, uh, the, the Louvre and the Metropolitan or the Victoria and Albert, the biggest exhibitions now are by fashion designers. You know, they're by uh, Christian Dior, uh, Alexander McQueen. You know, that was, those were the biggest shows in the Metropolitan Museum of, of you know, the most famous, most visited museum nearly in the world. Even the Louvre now, they had a Dior exhibition. For months afterwards, there was a whole queue up the Rue de Rivoli. Yeah, I know, I saw that. 500 yeah. people. You don't see that even to go and see the, the, the Mona Lisa. I mean, it was yeah. a remarkable expression that people now, not the intellectuals so much, people think of, of designers uh, 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 as great artists. So it's become this sixth art form. It's also a highly democratic one because uh, if you look at the history of most uh, uh Designers, they come from relatively modest backgrounds, and they're not in fashion. You know, McQueen's father was a taxi driver. Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Armani's father worked for the government, small functionary. Uh, you know, Karl Lagerfeld's father, he came from more money, but he, he worked in, he, uh, he ran a milk company. So it's, it, it is a social transmission that people of talent can, can rise to, to the top and, and and express themselves. So I find that fascinating. So you think that in the future we'll have much more people will start again like life was before? I really hope so because we all miss it, you know. Yeah, I start we'll, be, we'll be back having fun again, seeing oh, people. Yeah, I, I, friends, I think you know? uh, people are dying. I mean, I think that's why we're in a second lockdown now because people went out to fun again this summer all over Western Europe. If you look in France, the French people couldn't go abroad, so they all stayed in France. But yeah, the beaches yeah. of Biarritz and, and Saint Tropez and the Côte d'Azur were packed full of people. The cafes were packed, so the That's transmission started yeah. again. Sadly, you know, uh, COVID nineteen it, it, it kills older people who have more often. You know what I mean? Our children don't seem to be very affected. Uh, healthy people seem to be okay. So it's a very cruel. It's a very cruel disease, but you know, uh, nonetheless, uh, you know, you feel again in Paris that the, the place is being slowly locked down again. And, and it's very sad starting again. It's very, it's very sad. Yeah. And you've been to Brazil for the World Cup, haven't you? Oh yes, I've been to Brazil twelve times in my life. I'm really? Oh, sorry. tell us what you thought about Brazil because that's we have all our Brazilian soldiers. Oh, I, I, love, I love Brazil. I always wanted to go there ever since I saw I, ever since I saw the World Cup in 1970 when the great Pelé and Jarzino they won the, the football. Yeah. And there was an exuberance about. And I also love the multiracial aspect and the, the music that they played and, and and how pretty the girls were all were on TV. Yeah. Uh, and then I began to discover Brazilian cinema. With Glauber, yeah, Rock, good. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And the, uh, you know, the, the move, those kind of violent movies, and then of course, uh, Orfeo Negro, you know, one of my favorite films, and um, uh, and, and then later on, some of the writers, and eventually, then I began to meet Brazilians. There were no Brazilians when I was a boy in Ireland growing up. They just saw them playing football. So I went there, like, on the, uh, you know, the the immense natural beauty of the country strikes you right away the this incredible tropical you know atmosphere what, uh, what advice would you give to someone who for instance like if we had a brazilian designer who wanted to start what would advice would you give him to be you to be good in, in europe i mean outside of brazil it's not I, I easy. Would, no it's not easy you know it, it's very hard it's very hard if you look at the history of fashion all these countries, uh, uh, the BRICS, China, was it Brazil, Russia, India, China, whatever, they have not produced uh, superstar designers. I mean, there are very good designers in Brazil. Uh, you know, they're very good brands, Osclin, or they're, you know, there are, there are many talented young uh, Brazilian designers who showed in, in Paris to be successful, but uh, um, but they never, they never really made it in Europe. They never, they, but that's true in, in in Russia, India, and China as well. So yeah. it's not, it's not an obvious thing. I think if you want to be a designer, I think you have to be uh, true to yourself. You have to think of uh, 
a, once again, a concept that's strong, that says something about who you, who you are, and then be true to that. You know, whatever it is, whether you're making tropical Gothic or you're making minimalism, you know, and I, 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 at the end of the day, if anything, it's curious that uh, the great art of Brazil, in the end, it has become more architecture than, and design than fashion. You know, the most famous artist in, in Brazil is Oscar Niemeyer. And, and you have, yeah, absolutely, yeah. you know, these great uh, artists like Lino, uh, architect like Lino Bombardi, or, or these great, uh, Marcio Kogan, the great architect who builds Fantastic his... Kogan, I love Kogan. Yeah. He's, he's probably the most interesting private yeah. homes in, in the last 20, 30 years. You know, and there are there others. It, it, and it's quite instructive if you look at, um, uh, you know, Brazilian Boat makes a pretty good magazine, you know, and, and, and has done for a long time. It's a good magazine and often a very good magazine. But often Casa Vogue looks, you know, more more original the actual no the idea is because it's it's expressing something about the aesthetic of brazil which is not so easy to find and, it, and it's not much more ahead of other people uh, whereas um you know if you go to brazil sometimes i mean i've been the fashion weeks there you know sao paulo is maybe after the the big four paris milan new york london it's yeah. maybe the best fashion week in the world you know, oh really? Well, I'm good. they're going to be very happy to hear that. Well, I mean, it's true. I mean, I've been to uh, Moscow and, and, and Beijing and Sydney and, yeah. and, and Madrid and Barcelona and Antwerp. I've been to a lot of fashion shows, uh, fashion weeks. Uh, and Sao Paulo, when it's good, well, you know, was and even Rio, it was not as big and it was mainly yeah, yeah, sure. but even then, it's a top ten. It's a top ten season and and. There were, there's always a lot of shows. There's a lot of design. You have beautiful fabrics in Brazil, much more sophisticated, I expect. And then you have all these fantastic models who go and, and, and appear in them. They come back and they treat them like superstars. Yeah. <laughs> it's very curious. If you go to uh, uh, Sao Paulo, all the great models come back. You know, or not every season, but I've seen yeah. Giselle in shows. I've, Absolutely, you know, yeah. You know, I mean, I've seen, I've seen them all, you know what I mean, at different stages. If you go to Moscow, and there are a lot of big Russian models, you never see any of the Russian superstars go back. And right. I'm asking um, um, Natasha Polly, maybe the biggest Russian model, I mean, so why don't you ever go home and support a local designer? And she said she was scared she would be kidnapped. Really? Oh, come on. <laughs> you can't be that provincial. Come on, honey. No? No. That's really provincial. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the other thing about Brazil is, it's a fun fashion week. There are no, there are always great parties and exotic clubs, are, and people are very welcoming. You know what I mean? Private houses. You know, I, I remember, you know, around uh, 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 that wonderful lake that you have, Lagoa. Yeah. In Rio, uh, you mean? In Rio, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Some in, Rio. in Rio, these fantastic villas in Sudak. Yeah. Sudaco de Cristo, is that right? What you call it? Sudaco. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Sudaco yeah. de Cristo. But Rio. you know, Godfrey, I would love you to come to Brazil one year as for the conference. This year, this year we have to do it on Zoom because we have no choice. But as you're a big fan of Brazil, I would really, really love you to come. I, what message can you give for all our followers who are following you now from Brazil? Just give a message what you, because they love you, they were very excited that I'm doing you your interview, and so they're all waiting for a message from you. No, I, 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 I say two things. One, I hope in my next life, I come back as a Brazilian because I've always, I've always loved That's the people nice. so much. And the second, the second one is um, to be brave. And this, is, this will go on for a while longer. To be brave and believe in yourself and educate yourself in this time. Read, think, paint, study, exercise don't waste the time feeling sorry so when when the lockdown ends you'll be ready to say something and let everyone know what it is godfrey thank you so much you were great i'm so happy that we did that and next time we see each other in sao paulo always okay. my always, always great pleasure to you, Georgina, big, big, big kiss big big huge hug
Bye, thank you. Essa foi minha conversa com Godfrey Dini, que você viu, adorei, porque ele é um grande fã do Brasil. Eu espero que nos toques do Iguatemi, um ano que, um ano que vem, vamos poder ele vir no Brasil. E espero que vocês tenham gostado. Até a próxima, que vai ser muito, muito em breve, daqui a uns dias. Beijo, obrigada. É isso aí, espero que vocês tenham curtido e a gente volta já às 18h30 para um encontro entre duas gigantes, literalmente, Gwyneth Paltrow e Carol Trintini. Aguardo vocês. E quero lembrar também de vocês usarem a nossa hashtag Iguatemi Talks Fashion, sempre que postarem nas redes de vocês. Até já.